Hello, brothers and sisters. Today is August the 25th, and you know, I think I believe that we have uh, gotten an errand from the Lord. I'm, I'm not sure if this was for a few or if this is for all, but uh, last night in dream, I think the Lord had given me a message, and it has to do with tending to the elderly. Also, I, I think I got last night, um, it was made known to me some of the plans of the enemy, and I'd like to share a few of those things with you guys if I can. All right, so let me get to to the plans of the enemy first. Last night I was taken in a dream, and guys, the dreams are getting so vivid lately that I'm not sure if they're dreams, visions, or if I'm actually there doing these things. You know, back in the day I could tell if it was a dream or a vision, easily or a waking dream, but now they're so vivid I can't tell if my spirit's there or if I'm dreaming. It goes to show you how thin the veil is getting right now. And speaking of the veil, evil spirits were also sent into, I guess you could say, if you think about CERN and what they're trying to do, they're trying to open the door to, uh, I guess you could call it the veil of, or the wall to hell. Alright, there is a physical, or spiritual physical wall that is there stopping them from getting out. And I heard, I don't know what was the whole point of this, but last night I heard that well let me just share with you what, what I saw in this dream in the dream there was a school and in the school it's kind of like there was a huge line of people and we're all in line and everything and there was this teacher there who happens to play the role of the female I'm, I'm not sure if she's playing any role like a bride or not but she's playing the role of the female and we start to talk and it starts to get a little chaotic and the thing about it is is when they were talking they were saying I was actually sent back until like time it had to do with time, and if you look at CERN, CERN is also, uh, it's believed, trying to stop time. That way their end doesn't come as fast. They want to stop time so they have more time to do, you know, their dirt on this earth. So I actually went back in time as I'm talking to them. As I'm, and as I'm talking to them, um, I'm being told their plan. And as I'm being told their plan, I start to get um, in the dream, in this place, attacked by like a small animal. I take the small animal, I pick it up to get rid of it, and I punch it. Uh, for those of you who love animals, uh, I love animals too, so don't get mad at that. But I, you know, sometimes in these dreams, like, you're not really fighting an animal. You're fighting, it's like, it's representation of something evil. And as I'm sitting there, I am being told that, in, okay, before I even say what they're planning... It won't, of course, 100% would, would never work. We all know, you know, that Holy Ghost is God. You know, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is Spirit. That's how He testifies truth to us. Well, they were saying that their plan not only has to do with time, but that they wanted to trap. They called it the, uh, I think they called it the bird. I'm going to see if I wrote it down. Okay, we all know the Holy Ghost, right? When Jesus was baptized and some other points, I believe. It came as a dove, a bird. It descends a dove, as a dove. Well, their plan was to... Their plan is to trap the Holy Ghost. They called it the bird. Trap the bird in... Basically, where they're at, they want to trap the Holy Ghost. And if we think about this, we are the bride. And the bride, the Holy Ghost, rests inside of us. So whenever we get pulled out, if the Holy Ghost rests inside of us, the Holy Ghost comes with us. Remember, the power of God, you know, if you ever like have been at one of your most highest spiritual points, have you guys ever realized that you have a, a gleam, like a power in your eyes that's not your of your own, it's uh, of the Holy Ghost? That's why when a lot of people are under attack, you, they feel attacked and stopped all up to the point of their eyes because the... The eyes, the, the eyes are the window to the soul, and if the soul is rest inside of us, the Holy Ghost. We're, we're vessels of God, and as vessels, the Holy Ghost remains inside of us. That's why. That's why another reason why those who you who get attacked a lot of times, you know, uh, when demonics will try to attack you, they will back into you. They will not look at you because once your eyes see them, the Holy Ghost is concentrated on them and the Holy Ghost and evil cannot res cannot reside at the same place at the, uh, at the same time if the Holy Ghost is there evil has to flee that's how powerful our God is but I just thought it was really crazy that they even think that not only can they mess with time 
but they actually believe that and this is what I'm getting that they think they can trap the Holy Ghost where they were trapped and if they think they can trap the Holy Ghost they're thinking they can trap power which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life you, just, you can't you know God is God he's omnipotent omniscient all powerful all knowing you, you, you can't stop God God created he's the creator of time he made time you know once guys under attack I was told uh, when as I'm rebuking I was getting yelled at and I was told that we have our scientists our best scientists working on this that's what they yelled at me so now it's making more sense to me that they're having their scientists uh, their top demonic scientists fallen angel scientists working on a way to beat God and guys it will never work never work our God is a great God you know our God is the creator of the universe he created the world through his his word and his word is Jesus Christ the great I am the great Jehovah now to to the errand or to what I think the Lord is asking us to do and I'm not sure it wasn't it, the, the message wasn't uh, specified whether it, it was for all of us or for some of us but I believe once I share this message if this touches you in your heart if this witnesses to you then if the Spirit hits you then that speaks of truth the, the Holy Ghost testifies of truth I was shown a number and what's, what's crazy about these numbers sometimes, if I don't run to my notepad to write them down, by the time I get there, the enemy is already trying to get this erased out of my, my mind so I can't present it to you guys. But I was shown a number. It was either 246, 246, or it was 249, which is kind of crazy. I think it was 246, but if it was 249, that's like, that's, it could be dates. I'm not sure. 249, uh, September 24th. But I'm not positive on that. This is just, I'm just letting you guys know it was either one of those numbers, 246 or 249. As I'm watching this number, I was told that this number also might have been symbolic of something to do with righteous people online. It had to symbolize not only makers of YouTube videos, but those who are preaching the gospel online, encouraging people. And it has something to do with the online ministries or online churches. And as I'm looking at this number, um, the Spirit is leading me to a home. Okay, and in this home, as I open the door, it's like the Spirit's showing us to go into this home. And as I go into this home, I see an elderly lady with like an like a old folks home uh, type elderly people coming towards me. And I'm focusing on this one elderly lady and I'm thinking in my head, and I almost feel, guys, like I wasn't told anything, and then I woke up shortly after that. But it's as if the Lord is saying that He wants us, and if this ministers to your heart, the Spirit touches you, He is trying to say that He wants you, before the rapture, to go and minister to the old folks in old folks' homes and in the retirement communities because there are so many baby boomers, you know, older people that are sitting in these homes who never get ministered to, never are shown love, and... And they need our, our prayers and our attention just as much as the younger people do. And these people are really, you know, they're in their elder years, guys. So they're going to be passing away. And before they pass away, you have the chance to minister to them, to change their lives. And if they accept Jesus before they die, they still go to heaven. The reward of going to heaven is still the same. So if you feel the spirit when I'm saying this, you might be one of those the Lord wants to go and speak to the elderly people which testify of Jesus Christ of the coming rapture and and your happiness guys with these elderly people will be just as rewarding in the next life as it would if you were to change the life of somebody 13 14 you know 10 years old it's the same thing I like to uh, pretty much end this video by sharing a few scriptures with you guys and maybe saying a few words uh, John 17 the beginning it states these words, words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent guys let me say that again this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent guys 
make that little extra effort right now. We are days, weeks, I doubt, months away from a glorious reunion with the Savior Jesus Christ where you will fall on your knees, fall to the ground, and be able to see the most glorious being ever standing in front of you. And Jesus also says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, and keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. We are commanded to be one, guys. One as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Guys, if you remember one of the visions of the older visions, I was taken to one of the schools, and the Lord God, Father, Heavenly Father, took me on stage, and everybody in the audience was freaking out. Like, how is he on a stage next to Heavenly Father and Jesus and the Holy Ghost? He should be burning up. And as I'm on stage, my body starts to transform. The Holy Ghost starts to come on me, and I become one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the only way I was able to stand the presence of the Father. And in this school, before we went on the stage and before it became like an audience, we were all in a classroom and Father was way up to our left and we were all on the Father's right hand. All of us. He was at the far left. So we, I could see that we were on the Father's right hand. So this is how we could uh, withstand His power. Also, let's talk about, you know, how the true church is supposed to be. You know, what are some of the things that uh, we as Christians of Jesus Christ, how are we supposed to act? You know, there's a religious spirit that's going around that, you know, religion is actually taking place of the doctrines of Jesus Christ. If, if your church is having you spend more time doing, doing things and it's coming a job to you, instead of, you know, if you're not feeling the spirit, that means you're not feeling truth. And if you're not feeling truth, that means you're doing something wrong. In the early churches, when they were feeling the spirit, like an axe, uh, chapter 4, 31 through 35, it states, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. So speak with boldness. Then it says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And brought the prices of the things that were sold. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. And, dis and distribution was made unto every man according to that which he had need. Guys, we have brothers and sisters out there. Okay. We have people in need. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do as they did? Wouldn't it be nice if without even asking, if we, if we, the Spirit tells us that brother or sister is having a hard life and needs food, without even asking, just be able to go and send them some food? We're not supposed to have welfare, disability. We're supposed to have brothers and sisters who care for each other. We need to be there for each other, everybody. It's, this is, well, let's read in Acts chapter 3. At the beginning it states, Now Peter and John went up, together, went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked, and alms and Peter fasted his eyes upon him and with John and said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle and bones received strength brothers and sisters you might not have much you might be poor. You might be sitting in your house and be living off a of can, good brother, brothers and sisters. But what you got is the greatest gift of all. You have the gift of knowing that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Proclaim this. Proclaim this from the rooftops. Go into the communities. Be bold. Speak with boldness. Time is short, brothers and sisters. The finish line is right in front of us. Run. Run to it. 
We might not have many things. If we have many things, give. Give to those in need. But if you have nothing, brothers and sisters, give that which you have. And that is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. You have the ability to witness and proclaim boldly the name of Jesus Christ. Time is short. I love all of you. Please subscribe and pass this video on. Now is the time. Now is the time to prove yourself. Dear brothers and sisters, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You've come in the final day. Knowing God has held you in reserve for nearly 6,000 years. You have been with you. Are a marked generation. Mark generation. Mark generation. Your birth at this particular time was for God has days. saved for the final inning of the Lord you, you must be prepared to meet your oh, God. youth of the noble birth. You're part of the Lord's royal army. army there are things for each of you to do. But no one else can do. You have preserved as well as your special world. You. 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 Me?